Calcium homeostasis is the topic of the screencast. You may find information on calcium homeostasis in Chapter 9 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to achieve the following objectives. List the hormones that maintain blood calcium homeostasis. For each hormone, describe the following. The organ of secretion, the stimulus of secretion, the chemistry of the hormones, whether they are hydrophilic or hydrophobic, the target tissues and effects, and how the hormones are regulated. Lastly, describe the consequences of vitamin D deficiency and hypo and hypersecretion of parathyroid hormone. Calcium homeostasis is very important. Calcium levels in the blood must be maintained within a very narrow range. Calcium levels in the blood is so important because it participates in very important functions. Calcium is involved in blood clotting. Calcium is also involved in the secretion of hormones and the secretion of neurotransmitters. So for the proper functioning of the endocrine system and the nervous systems, both controlling systems, proper levels of calcium in the blood are required. Calcium, of course, is very important for the growth, repair, and maintenance of bone since a large portion of the extracellular matrix is composed of calcium phosphate salts. There are three hormones that maintain calcium homeostasis. They are vitamin D, parathyroid hormone, and to a lesser extent, calcitonin. Let's discuss vitamin D first. Vitamin D is actually a steroid hormone. Even though we call it a vitamin, it's a steroid hormone. So if you've ever consumed vitamin D supplemented milk, you have taken hormones. Vitamin D is made endogenously when UV light from the sun bombards your skin. Your skin cells make vitamin D. And that vitamin D is then converted to an active form by uh, a process that involves the liver and the kidneys. The main function of vitamin D is to increase blood levels of calcium. And it does this by increasing the absorption of calcium from the small intestine. So even though you may have sufficient amounts of calcium in your diet to really absorb that calcium and to bring it into your blood, you also have to make sure you are consuming or your body is making sufficient amounts of vitamin D. Parathyroid hormone is secreted by the parathyroid glands. That shouldn't be very difficult to remember. Para means beside, and these parathyroid glands are located on or around the thyroid gland. Parathyroid hormone, like vitamin D, increases blood calcium levels. It does this by, one, targeting osteoclasts, stimulating those osteoclasts to break down or resorb bone. As bone is broken down and resorbed, that may, uh, makes calcium and phosphorus, for that matter, available to the blood. So that raises blood calcium levels. Parathyroid hormone also targets the kidneys and it decreases the amount of calcium that's lost in the urine. Parathyroid hormone causes the kidneys to retain more calcium in the blood. And again, that action also helps raise blood calcium levels. Lastly, parathyroid hormone also stimulates the activation of vitamin D. Calcitonin is a hormone that is secreted by the thyroid gland, but let me be clear that when, we, when you hear the term thyroid hormones, that refers specifically to T3 and T4, not calcitonin, even though it is indeed secreted by the thyroid gland. Calcitonin is made in a different location in the thyroid gland than T3 and T4. Uh, its chemistry is completely different. It is hydrophilic, but it is not composed of iodine and the amino acids that compose T3 and T4. Calcitonin decreases blood calcium levels, and it does this by 
stimulating osteoblasts, causing osteoblasts to deposit bone. And as bone is deposited, calcium and phosphorus is removed from the blood and uh, deposited into the newly forming bone. I will now use this figure to summarize the control of blood calcium homeostasis by vitamin D, parathyroid hormone, and calcitonin. So let's say that you just consume the meal high in calcium and that you have sufficient amounts of vitamin D in your diet. Calcium levels in the blood will rise. With that increase in blood calcium levels, there will be stimulation of cells of the thyroid gland to release calcitonin. Calcitonin targets the osteoblasts found in your bones. The osteoblasts will begin depositing new bone and calcium and phosphorus will be removed from the blood and be deposited into bone. That will cause a decrease in calcium levels. With a decrease in calcium levels, the stimulus that caused calcitonin to be released in the first place is now gone. So further release of calcitonin will be inhibited by the classic negative feedback mechanism. Now let's say it's been a few hours since you have eaten and now your blood calcium levels are beginning to fall. A drop in blood calcium levels will be detected by the thyroid gland in response, excuse me, the parathyroid glands. The parathyroid glands in response will secrete parathyroid hormone. Vitamin D will also be activated. Parathyroid hormone will stimulate osteoclasts to resorb bone, releasing calcium and phosphorus into the blood. Vitamin D will increase the absorption of calcium from the intestinal tract. Parathyroid hormone will also decrease the amount of calcium lost through urine production. The actions of vitamin D and parathyroid hormone will increase blood levels of calcium and phosphorus, returning them to normal. With the increase in calcium levels, the stimulus that caused parathyroid hormone and to a certain extent vitamin D to be activated is now removed. And so there is less secretion of parathyroid hormone and less activation of vitamin D, again through a classic negative feedback mechanism. I do want to add that parathyroid hormone and vitamin D are the primary regulators of blood calcium homeostasis. Calcitonin plays really a very minor role and in fact if uh, the thyroid gland is completely removed and there is no calcitonin production, it does not cause any problems in the patient. Let's talk now about the consequences of calcium homeostatic imbalances. If you do not get sufficient vitamin D in your diet, or if you don't get enough sunlight to make enough endogenously, in children you can have a condition called rickets, where poor deposition of bone makes the bones weak particularly the bones of the lower appendages aren't able to uh, bear the weight of the upper body and you get a bowing of the legs. In adults, insufficient vitamin D leads to weakening of the bones, a condition called osteomalacia, and there the bone density is low and there's an increased risk of fracture. Hypersecretion of parathyroid hormone leads to excessive bone resorption by osteoclasts. This weakens the bones, making them more susceptible to fracture. And with such a large mobilization of calcium from the bone into the blood, there's also going to be a lot of calcium being excreted in the urine. And that can cause the formation of urinary calculi or what you know as kidney stones. Hyposecretion of parathyroid hormone can be fatal if it is severe enough. If 
uh, an autoimmune disease completely destroys your parathyroid glands or if the parathyroid glands are accidentally amputated along with the thyroid that will cause death within days. To review the objectives of the screencast, list the hormones that maintain blood calcium homeostasis. For each hormone, describe the following, the organ of secretion, the stimulus of secretion, chemistry, whether it's hydrophobic or hydrophilic, target tissues and effects, regulation of the hormone, and describe the consequences of vitamin D deficiency and hypo and hypersecretion of parathyroid hormone. The adrenal glands will be the topic of our next screencast.